look in verse number 6 of 1 Kings chapter 22. The Bible says, Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead uh, to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we, we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I don't know, this, this you, you can just really get the... Uh, <laughs> kind of the character of Ahab here. He said, I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He doesn't tell me what I want to hear. And the Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne having put on their robes in a void place of the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Zedekiah, the son of Shemaniah, uh, made him horns of iron. These are like small little uh, uh, metal things that the, the enemy and even Israel sometimes would wear uh, this um, in, in battle, kind of a symbolic thing. And he put these on, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead, and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king, with one mouth, they're all in agreement. Everybody's saying, go up to battle, you're going to be fine. Uh, he said, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them. Don't tell the truth, just blend in with the other, uh, the false prophets. And uh, they speak good. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord has said unto me, that will I speak. That's a good policy. And he came to the king, and the king said unto Micaiah, Shall we go up against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. <laughs> now, he's being sarcastic, and he's doing it in a way that Ahab knows he's being sarcastic. And he, I would love, that's one of those times <laughs> In the Bible that I just loved to be there to heard how that came out. But he's 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 in in a sense, no doubt, he's mocking the four hundred prophets and and the uh, false prophets and Zedekiah too. Oh yeah, go up, you're gonna you're gonna do right. And and because of that obvious sarcasm in his voice, the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true? In the name of the Lord. So just tell me the truth. Quit fooling around. He said, okay, you want the truth? Verse 17, he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills of sheep that, that hath not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no goods concerning me but evil? In other words, he's saying the only reason he's saying what he's saying is because he doesn't like me. He's totally excluding the fact that God is speaking. He doesn't believe, at least in this point, that God speaks to people. And that's important because that's the problem we're facing today. Uh, he said, he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil. And he said, hear, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. This is the truth. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him 
on his right hand and on his left. The Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One said on this manner, and another said on that manner. There came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said, go unto him wherewith. And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And he said, thou, hath, shall, uh, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for your people, Lord, uh, putting themselves in a spirit and in a place to hear the truth. We want truth. Lord, if it doesn't uh, set well with us, help us to get our hearts right and, and uh, respond to truth. And Lord, by all means, if there's someone listening today that doesn't understand the truth that they need to be born again because they're all, we're all sinners and they don't understand the truth that one day if they die without Christ, they'll spend eternity in hell. Convey that truth. Lord, there's a multitude preaching another message, but convey that truth today to every one of us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Been a while, I think, since I've preached in the Old Testament. I've got hung up for a while in the Old Testament and just preached. I remember a while back several messages, and I, I was thinking, I'm thinking, I keep trying to get back to the Old Testament, but I'm more and more uh, have been in the Gospels and the Epistles have been in the New Testament. And so I'm getting a, kind of a hungering for I love the Old Testament. It's, it's all the Word of God, and you cannot preach the full counsel of God's word without preaching the Old Testament and the New Testament. We don't want to get lopsided. And I like this uh, scripture. I've, I've tried to uh, get this across several times, and I know I've mentioned it, that the people in, uh, the people in those old days, their hearts uh, were just like our hearts. Their thinking was just like our thinking. They had good people like we have good people, and uh, they have evil people. And so we, we're living in the same uh, uh, character of humanity that they lived in. And we see what power does. It does corrupt. We see Ahab. And, and uh, you go back into the uh, previous chapter, in chapter 21, we see God, uh, uh, you know the story of, of how Elijah uh, what, how they had became, became enemies, and uh, it, it's hard to be friends with folks that, that, uh, that are anti-God, that hate God. Uh, it's a lot easier to be friends, and we want to reach people, but if I'm friends with people that hate God, it's for the purpose of getting them to Christ. And so uh, if I want to have a good time, want to relax and be myself, I want to be around God-fearing God-believing Christians. I, I, I think we need to have some lost friends, but I think after a while, uh, we need to be long-suffering and patient, but after a while, we need to let the hammer fall. Amen. That is, we need to tell them, no, you need to quit complaining about God. You need to quit blaming God. And I think we need to stand up for the Lord after we've go, given folks a period of time to adjust to that. And I've told folks before, uh, uh, you know, the friends that say, if you really want to be my friend, get Jesus in your heart, walk right, get in the house of God somewhere, but we'll be best buddies because then we got something in common. Amen. And so that's so important. So Elijah uh, comes to Ahab in, in uh, chapter 21 to pro pronounce judgment on him because he had uh, stole Naboth's vineyard. And uh, it was a nice vineyard right near the palace, and he wanted it. So he got, uh, uh, Jezebel talked him into it, and he's whining like a baby because he can't have it. And uh, she says, oh, don't, we'll, we'll, don't pout, Ahab, we'll get it for you. And she hired false prophets, and not false prophets, but false witnesses to testify against him, uh, Naboth, and he's put to death, and then... Uh, uh, Ahab goes and possesses a vineyard, and then Elijah comes in and meets him. And uh, Ahab, of course, speaks uh, first, and 
and he says, oh, my enemy. And, uh, of course, uh, Elijah said, no, you're, uh, you're the enemy of God, and you're the one that did these horrible things. And one of the things that um, Elijah said to him uh, in, in pronouncing this judgment, uh, and the Bible said that he had, he had joined himself or sold himself to sin. And that's an interesting word because that word soul, sold means that you have, you've given up on any good and you've totally committed yourself to evil. There's a lot of folks that are headed that way, that they've they got a little bit of sin in their life and they're on the verge of just making up their mind they're going to serve sin and serve Satan the rest of their life. And that's what he did. And that same word means to, uh, sold means to, uh, to have a habitual lifestyle giving over to something. And it also is the same word meaning to marry. So it's kind of a play on words. And Elijah's saying, you have married yourself with Jezebel. You have married yourself to sin. And uh, she made him, uh, he was a bad man, but he was a weak man. And she made him worse. And she had no scruples. She had no, uh, she would put the prophets of, of God to death in a heartbeat and did. And uh, uh, she had no problem uh, making God her her enemy. And here is one of those. I, I preached, when was that? I, was it Wednesday night? I preached about every time I see that in, in the Bible, after David's sin, David's repentance, it said, uh, God says to other kings, he said, you have followed like my servant David. And he says, uh, David was a man after God's own heart. So we see the power of repentance. But this to me is probably one of the best proof texts of what repentance is in the Bible to me. It just jumps out at me. You know, when I see a sinner that's, that's struggling and wants to turn their life around, I say all mercy to them. But when I see somebody, you know, that's kind of evil and did some things like Ahab did, I say, nah, let's don't give him so much mercy. But this is a principle, and you should, you should rejoice in this. God... Uh, Ahab, when he hears the judgment, and he said, the dogs are going to drink your blood. And he hears the judgment of Elijah. He tells him what's going to happen, where, is, where it's going to happen. And then uh, Ahab, and he said, judgment is going to fall on your family. And he said, all these things are going to happen. And Ahab repented, and he knows he must repent or perish. And he walks humbly before the Lord, and uh, he has a, a, a change of mind and attitude. So here's a man that's so wicked, so wicked, but yet God extends mercy to him because he repents. And God says, okay, I'm going to do this judgment, uh, this, the, the severe extent of this judgment. I'm wiping your family out. But he said, I'm not going to do it in your lifetime. Because you repented, you're not going to have to see all that. Now that's, that's God sparing from judgment. Folks, I'm impressed with that. I'm looking at this and thinking, that's what repentance is. That's what re repentance does. Doesn't matter how bad you are, I, none of us probably would vote for uh, uh, Elijah, uh, for Ahab to be, uh, to be pardoned in his lifetime. But God said, if you repent, you respect me, it doesn't matter who you are, how bad you are, and that's that's pretty awesome. So uh, he he repented, and then judgment came later in uh, in his in his lifetime. But God does require his life, and and we need to understand that um, as even as Christians, there comes a point in our life when God keeps talking to us, and talking to us, and talking to us, and He's long suffering. He's long suffering. He's long suffering. And finally, there comes a time when God says, that's it. I'm done. And God will take a Christian to heaven early. So God's way more long-suffering than us. And all of us have seen people. We thought, well, God's going to take them out. And uh, I've said that about some people, and God has done it. 
So I don't want to be in that category. You won't lose your salvation, but you'll get, it's a shortcut to heaven. And you got a life that you want to live. You want to finish your course. So it, it behooves us to uh, repent. So there's a, there's a uh, that brings us to chapter 22. That's the setting behind that. And so there is a three uh, years without war between Syria and Israel because of the defeat of uh, Ben Hadad, Ben Hadad, and Jehoshaphat and Ahab are, are together at a kind of a kind of a feast, and and I believe it was Ahab said to him, "Hey, let's go up to uh, Ramoth Gilead. It's ours." He's saying it's like a threshing floor. It's it it was it was one of our providence before the war. Let's go take it back. And so Jehoshaphat, who is a righteous person, uh, had no business joining with Ahab. You just, you know, we, we minimize that, but the Bible says to have, to, not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, if, if we're entering into a, a partnership of some kind, not just marriage, certainly that, but, but a, a partnership of some kind uh, that with someone who's an unbeliever, then you can ex expect disastrous results. So uh, Jehoshaphat uh, says to the king, he said, uh, Ahab said, hey, let's go up to battle. Will you join me? And he says, well, my people are your people. My horses are your horses. Well, sure we will. And he said, the only thing I'm asking, he said, let's, uh, uh, let's inquire of the Lord, Jehoshaphat says. I want to hear what God's got to say about it. And Ahab says, well, I got 400 prophets here. One of them's running around with horns on his head saying, we're going to push the enemy back. That must have been a dramatic thing. You know, folks, we have got to get our heads right when you hear things that sound um, powerful and articulate. And when there's a large audience applauding, and everybody's saying this is the way it is. And I'm talking about religion in primarily. And the whole world said, oh, this person's of God. This person's doing great work. And there's great swelling words, the Bible describes them. And there's a great congregation. And there you, you get called up and you vision. You see that visual and you look at it like, boy, this is truth. I told you about what... Um, the professor did in, in uh, my son Josh's class at Biola. He came in as a, as pretended they'd never met him. Their first day in class, he pretended to be someone else who was kind of a, uh, a, a, a false believer, I guess you could say, a religious person. And then he starts denouncing things of God in a very intelligent way. Oh, no, that's not right. And how do we know this? And what history doesn't teach that. Bible history doesn't teach that. And he had one lady in tears in the class. And Josh is ready to go to war. And he's got his hand up and he said he wouldn't call on him. He had said, I had all the answers. But the whole class was uh, visually upset. And they're raising their hands. And some people are answering questions. And then the professor finally revealed, he said, I, I'm not who I said I was. I'm the professor of your class. I'm just showing you what you're going to face. And they're going to be religious people. And they are, they are God deniers. They are Bible deniers. And they are going to, you're going to read it. You're going to see it. You're going to hear it. And they're going to sound smooth as smooth can be. And if you're not careful, somebody's going to put on a little set of metal horns. And they're going to prophesy you know, like a bull pushing, oh, you're going to come in, uh, Ramoth Gilead, and you're going to have a great victory. You're going to destroy. This is the way to live. There's 400 of them, and they're all, amen, that's right. And if you got caught up in that, if you get in that group of people, you're going to say to yourself, look at all these people here. Look, 400 prophets. The king, Ahab's nodding his head. Jehoshaphat probably nodding his head. This is the way it is. Boy, this is it. And you're going to start scratching your head saying, are we right? Are we, why, 
right in what we believe about the Bible, that's a good test. You're going to face that test. And you got to be able to stand up when there's 400 of them saying, yes, and you got to say, excuse me, is it my turn to speak? Good. Uh, I, I'm a Mr. Nobody from nowhere. I don't have the credentials that you have, but what I have is faith in God and faith in the Word of God, and I want to declare unto you a base with no other foundation than the truth of the word that God's judgment is coming. Now, you, can't you hear the crowd? Oh, oh, that fundamentalist. <laughs> that Bible believer. Will they never shut up? No, we won't. Don't they know the multitudes on our side? It doesn't matter. So God said, okay. There's a lot of insight here into God said, you want to go up? Now, God is described as a king. He said, he, he, Mikey, I gives this false, oh, yeah. And you know, oh, you know, I've heard enough preachers in my life to know the sarcasm that came from him. Was, oh, yeah, go up, king, wink, wink. Yeah, you're going to have a great victory. That's about how that was. Because Ahab sensed it. Ahab said, no, would you just tell me the truth? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills. This wasn't about the defeat of, of Israel or Judah. This was about the defeat of Ahab. The people are going to be scattered. They're, they're going to leave the battle. And, uh, of course, in the battle, he's a slick one. Here's a reason why you don't unequally <laughs> yoke with unbelievers. He said, hey, Jehoshaphat, i got a great idea. He said, why don't you dress up like me as a king? And you wear my robe and you wear my crown. You wear everything I wear. He said, let's see how that works out. It reminded me of Joel and Joshua when they were little. I was outside their room door and I heard Josh say, hey, Joel, let's put all our money together. You take the money out of your bank. And put, we'll put it in my bank. We'll have it in one place. <laughs> How'd that work out for you, Joel? <laughs> so Jehoshaphat said, yeah, that's like a great idea. And there was that little voice inside saying, something's wrong. You ever hear that voice? Something's not right. You need to stop and think on that, dude. It gets real clear. And so he dresses up in... in <laughs> Ahab's garment, Ahab dresses as a regular soldier. And then the, the king, uh, the enemy, says, hey, when you go into battle, he said, don't go after anybody but the king of Israel. Send all the chariots after him. You see him fall. So they go after Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat is wearing all the king's stuff, and he looks around, all the chariots are after him. And Ahab is over there horse laughing him. What an idiot. And then finally, Jehoshaphat sees they, they're coming after him. He starts taking his stuff. It's, and he at, and literally, he says, it's not me. I'm not, I'm not Ahab. I'm not, look, I'm not Ahab. And then they realize what Ahab had pulled. And so they start looking for, for Ahab and then a guy on a venture, that means like a bet. He's got a bow and arrow, and he said, there's, there's Ahab. And he said, bet you I can hit him from here. No, not that's too far. He said, I guarantee, so I can do it. I'm going to hit him right between the harnesses in the back where it's not protected. And he shot that arrow, and guess what it hit? God grabbed that arrow. It was going off target over here. The wind had carried it. God grabbed that arrow and he pulled it. No, this is going on target. I've already prophesied this. The arrow hit Ahab and they stood him up in battle. Uh, and then finally, he died. And just exactly what the prophet said, what Elijah said, and what Micaiah prophesied, he goes to that pool 
And the dogs, they wash the blood out and the dogs lick his blood off of his shield and off of that chariot. Now that's going to be the end of people. I don't care how big a swelling words they speak. Mike Ad describes, he said, talks about these lion prophets coming before and said, I'll, I'll go persuade him. And he's picturing and he's trying to tell Ahab, he said, you're not the king. God is the king. And he's picturing, using the, the metaphor of, of, the, of the type of uh, uh, system that the kings had where everybody subject to him, all the princes, the lesser leaders, came to the king, Ahab, and said, can I do this? Can I do that? And he'd say yes or no. He's saying to Ahab, you're not in control. You are not the king. God is the king. And he said, you are not, you're, you're being persuaded. You are being persuaded by God in something that you want to be persuaded in. You want to win the battle. You're being persuaded by God to go into the battle because God's going to kill you when you get there. That's a crude way of putting it, but that's how we do it in North Carolina. <laughs> God's in control. Truth first. It doesn't matter how many there are. It doesn't matter where they're educated. And this, is, this has been a battle. And I heard this preach when I first got saved. And, and the reason the independent Baptists exist is because we came out of a group that had... Uh, teachers in seminaries that were not preaching the truth. And they were preaching that, uh, teaching and preaching, denying the virgin birth, denying the blood of Jesus. And they were people who professed to be Christians. That's why the independent movement came out of that. And folks were seeing the same thing recycled today. Our young people are saying, oh, I found out something wonderful. I found out something at college. I found out something at seminary. Guess what? We're wrong about the Bible. And they start putting those little horns on and they start prophesying falsely. We knew about that stuff, young people. We came out of that stuff. Amen. Don't go back into it. Don't believe that junk. Let God be true and every man a liar. This Bible it's the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. It's all true. It's all true all the time. Amen. And what God said will come to pass. If God says you're coming to me and I'll forgive all of your sin, you better believe you'll do it. If God says you reject me and you'll die in your sins and spend eternity in hell, you better believe God will do it. Like yeah, I said, what God has said unto me, that will I speak. Do you have that kind of fortitude? Do you have that kind of backbone? We need to, we need to quit being so wishy-washy. Let people know where we stand. Tell it like it is. Tell it in love. Tell it with patience. But say, do you really believe that Jesus is born of a virgin? Yes! You know why? Because I didn't listen to a lying spirit. We get into trouble when we think we're smarter than God. Somebody said, well, you're just, you're just old school. You're just old-fashioned. No, I use this Bible because I do not trust verse versions of the Bible that are written by people who don't believe it. Amen. And I don't know what in the world is wrong with Christians that were set under a man. The first question I, I want to know if I'm going to be a part of a church, do you believe the Bible? Well, yeah. What part don't you believe? <laughs> then don't preach it. Because you're putting yourself above the Holy Spirit. You're saying, I know more than God knows. I'm not trying to be nitpicky. 
I'm not trying to be old school. There's a danger in denying the word of God. There's a danger in, in changing the word of God. And our children and our grandchildren and their children are going to be corrupted because some of us would not take a strong enough stand. Amen. Make that right now. Amen. He said it was right. What God said would happen, happened. What God said he would do, he did. And everything that God says is going to come to pass. You're going to leave this world one day, and you're going to stand before him. It's going to be awesome. But see, what this life is about is now we can do something for him. You can search all over heaven throughout eternity. You're not going to find any lost people to witness to that's what will be different. We've got an opportunity now to dedicate ourselves to God, to sacrifice for God, to be a witness for God, to be faithful to God, to go with God and keep saying it over and over through the years. The Bible's true. The Bible's true. Let it be said of you and I, when we die, boy, that person was an idiot. Why you say so? All they said was, the Bible's true. The Bible's true. Let's pray. Brother, would you come up, Brother Gay, and lead the singing? Lord, as we sing this invitation song, let us examine our hearts. Where are we with Jesus? Do we get fired up? Are we earnestly contending for the truth? Are we willing to stand and say, you know what? I believe the whole counsel of God's word I may look old-fashioned, and I may look uneducated, and I may not have the right popular opinion and be with the right phase of what's going on in the right fashion, but I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm sticking with the virgin birth. I'm sticking with the death, burial, and resurrection. I'm sticking with creation as the Bible teaches it. Sticking with loving people. And live in my life like this Bible is true. Help us, God, to do that, we ask in Jesus' name.